so in my live chat room, I was asked, why is it that gas clouds, which can be basically so low density, they're like a laboratory vacuum, how is it that these things don't just dissipate into space? And this is actually something that creationists talk about a lot, because they say, oh, stars can't possibly form from hot gas. Hot gas expands. We see this in, in balloons, right? Hot air balloons expand. They can't possibly collapse to form stars. And, you know, if a creationist is saying it, it's probably wrong. It's the way to bet. So what does this mean? Well, here's a picture of a really beautiful gas cloud that I'm getting from the book Bang by Chris Lintott, Patrick Moore, and Brian May, lead guitarist for Queen. That's so cool. He's an astronomer. Um, this is NGC 2467. That's just a catalog name. You can see this gorgeous cloud there. All of this is gas. You can see all the, all the gas. There's some dust, dark dust near, some stars lighting it up. Now, basically, some of these gas clouds are called, it, a singular is nebula, which is Latin for cloud. Plural is nebulae with, a, with an E on the end. And these gas clouds are very, very low density. And it, some of them, you know, the densest of them, might have tens or hundreds of thousands of particles per cubic centimeter. So if I had a mini marshmallow of science, I could show you this, right? But that's, that's about you know, a cubic centimeter, a salt a sugar cube or a mini marshmallow. And there might only be, you know, maybe a million particles per cubic centimeter inside of one of these gas clouds. And you might think, well, a million sounds like a lot. But the Earth's atmosphere all around us has 10 to the 19 particles, a one with 19 zeros after it. So this is trillions of times denser. The air is trillions of times denser than even the densest of, of these gas clouds in space. So if they're hot, and they are hot, some of them are you know, thousands of degrees, although usually they're, they're cooler than hundreds of degrees Celsius uh, or, or even lower. Um, uh, they're actually, most of them are actually very cold uh, compared to Earth temperature. Why don't they dissipate like hot air does in a, gas, in, a, in, a, in a hot air balloon. If you were to pop a hot air balloon, right, that, that hot air will dissipate. The reason they don't is because these nebulae are immense, okay? It's not just like a balloon, which might only have a few pounds of air in it. We're talking about a gas cloud, which is light years across. And so the total, total mass of this entire gas cloud can be many times the mass of the sun. These things form stars, they're star factories, and really big ones like the Orion Nebula or the Tarantula Nebula can have thousands, or some of them can have millions of times the mass of the sun. And all of that gravity added together is what holds that cloud together. That's why they don't dissipate. Gas clouds can collide. There are lots of uh, reasons they can do this. They're, they're orbiting the center of the Milky Way. Some of them are moving faster than others. Some of them are on orbits which aren't in perfect circles, and so they intersect and they, smack into each other. And when they do that, um, they can form shock waves and compress, and that can form local dense regions inside of the gas cloud, and those will collapse to form stars. We see this happening. Don't ever listen, well, you can listen to a creationist when they talk, it's always good, because then you can find out what not to think. Um, but when the creationists say, stars cannot form from nebulae, we don't see it happening, that is a lie. We see it happening in all different stages. We haven't seen one star all the way through the process any more than taking a snapshot of a crowd, you will see babies being born, right? Uh, uh, it takes a long time for this process to happen, hundreds of thousands or millions of years. So it's not like you can watch one star do it. We've only been watching for you know a couple of centuries. But we have seen stars in every different stage of development, from gas clouds to where the star is just starting to form and it's surrounded by dense gas, to where the gas is collapsing into a disk and forming planets. We've seen these disks with gaps in them where we can see, we can't see the planet itself, but we know that there are planets in that disk carving out these grooves and, and, and forming, forming new planets and, and gathering mass that way, to where the planet's system is very young and the planets are still glowing from the heat of their formation, all the way up to solar systems like ours, which is 4.6 billion years old, again, despite what some people are telling you. And so it's, it's kind of interesting. You get a question like, you know, what holds gas clouds together? And it actually takes you, if you follow the logic, you follow the physics and you follow the math, it takes you right through from they don't, do, they don't dissipate because of their own mass to this is how we see stars form. This is how we see us form. Uh, 
stars like the sun forming, they, they get heavy metals in them like iron and molybdenum and calcium and all that from stars that explode nearby and seed them with these heavy elements. Those form, and so the sun, uh, the sun gets iron in it from a, star, a nearby star that blew up. We see tons of evidence of this. And so it's, it's great. This is a great example of where a simple question leads you to very, very profound results.